All right, maybe you've heard the hype. Data ops will automate everything. Data ops is the future. It's the best job in tech. But is it really all sunshine and unicorns? Or is there a lot that nobody's telling you? Hey, it's Chris from the Data Engineering Channel, and today I am going to lay it all out why you might not want to be a data ops engineer and what the job really looks like. We're also going to throw in some of the tools that you will need to thrive as a data ops engineer. Stick around because today isn't the same old learn data ops and get rich story. Data ops is everywhere in every Gartner cycle, every vendor pitch, every recruiter email. It promises agile, efficient, reliable data pipelines, blending DevOps, data engineering, and analytics. And it sounds amazing until you're really in the trenches. If you picture data ops as some kind of automation magic, like pushing a button and getting perfect, reliable data for your business, let me set the record straight. Think of data ops as being the air traffic controller of the data world. You're responsible for making sure that all those data planes land safely. No collisions, no lost baggage, and absolutely no delays. The myth of easy automation is at its heart. Everyone wants this plug and play automation workflow, but it's just not the reality, right? Every data set, every business logic, every workflow is unique. You're going to end up writing more glue code than you have ever imagined. Next, you know, you end up being stuck between every team. As the data ops engineer, you're the translator, you're the therapist and the firefighter. You're juggling dev ops, data engineering, analytics and business. You're end you end up in endless meetings endless context switching, and everyone's favorite question, can you just make it work? Then you have this shadow IT and silo data issue, right? You have legacy systems, these random spreadsheets all over the place, data that's owned by teams that don't want to share. Your pipelines will break for reasons that have nothing to do with your code. You also have data quality issues, right? You know, this is kind of a moving target. You can have the best tools, orchestra, great expectations, Monte Carlo, DBT, Prefect, but defining and maintaining data quality is a forever job. Be prepared for those late Friday emails. Why does this number not match last month? You also have tools that don't solve for culture issues. You can automate, you can monitor, you can document everything. But if your company isn't ready to break down silos or define clear ownership, all you have is a process, not progress. You end up, you need patience, people skills, and the ability to say no without making enemies. All right, if you're still hanging with me, here is what the Data Ops Toolkit looks like. You have Airflow and Prefect. These are pipeline orchestration and scheduling tools. You have DBT. This is an analytics engineering and data transformation tool. Great Expectations and Monte Carlo are there for data validation, testing, and data quality monitoring. You have Orchestra, which is this amazing modern pipeline monitoring and observability tool that really gives you insight across your entire data ecosystem. You have Terraform, which is a IAS, IAC, so it's infrastructure as a code, and auto, you use it to automate your environment. You have YAML and Git files, right? You have YAML files and you have Git. So these are for configuration, version control, CI, CD workflows. You also throw in maybe Azure De DevOps in there for those uh, 
CI CD workflows as well. You have Bash and Python. You know, even as a data engineer, especially as any type of ops engineers, you're going to need to learn Linux and Bash. So Bash and Python are really the duct tape of every data team, and it's going to be important to learn. Then you have Data Kitchen, Dagster, and more. You know, the toolbox, just like for data engineers, continues to grow for this position. Every tool is amazing. A lot of them are new to the, you know, to the environment. So until you try to make them all play nice together, you really don't have a good feel of them. You know, it is your real job to orchestrate all of these different pieces. You know, connecting, orchestrating, and constantly troubleshooting all the different things that come up in this interactivity between all these tools. So why do people stick with data ops? Well, because when you pull it off, when the pipelines run clean, the data quality is solid, and the teams are aligned, it feels like you have performed the perfect magic trick in front of the whole company. The wins are often hard fought, but deeply rewarding. You are the detective, the architect, and sometimes the hero nobody saw coming. So if you love problem solving, detective work, and being that bridge builder, then data ops might be the position for you. And it gives you that front row seat to real innovation. Are you thinking about making that jump to data ops? Or maybe you're already in the trenches. What is the biggest challenge that you faced? Is it tools, culture, or that never ending detective work. Drop your stories down in the comments below. And if you want a deeper dive into any of these tools I mentioned today, put hashtag and the name of that tool down in the comments. Or maybe you want me to solve a real world data ops puzzle? Just let me know. Now, if you haven't already, be sure you hit that like and subscribe and share the, that video with somebody that you know is looking to be a data ops engineer. Now, until next time, keep your pipelines clean and your queries lean.